Hello, my name is Paul Donnell, and I'm here to tell you about how to mat the art that you just created. You can see in this picture here that I just made a simple Mickey Mouse pastel art, and like you, I want to protect it and be able to give it to somebody without making a mess. So, let's get started. In order to prepare for your matting, you want to be able to fix the pastel to the paper so that if it's jarred or moved or touched that it won't smear anywhere. Now you got to be kind of careful when you get a fixative like this because it can darken the pastel. That's why I get a final fixative. You really can't mess with it too much. And it's made to put charcoal or pencil or pastel onto the paper. That's what, And Prismacolor is the best I can find. So if you really care about your stuff and you can see in this picture I've got uh, chalk on my fingers because I've been smearing all this pastel stuff. You can see it comes off really easy. So make sure you use a good fixative. Let's start using it. Now the only safe way to apply this pastel is outside. I always take my picture, still taped to my easel, I take it outside and I spray it. And I do a light coat at first to see how much it's going to darken the pastel. And then if I think it needs more, I'll just spray it with some more. Let it gas off, kind of wave it around a little bit for about a minute or so before you walk back inside and stop from stinking up the house. Now, I don't know if you can see it real well, but this picture has darkened a little bit. Now, the good thing about this fixative is it fixes the pastel to the paper, which means you can draw over it. You can do layers upon layers, and you can do this over and over again until you get the pastel that you want. And you can see the results of that as I go through this process. These are basically the pieces that you're going to use to mat your artwork. Uh, the square piece in the middle with the hollow out, that's the matting. It's face down. The front side is black, the back side is white. The piece of square in the back is called backer board, and it can be like cardboard or it can be foam board. I like to use foam board because it's a little bit thicker and it's a little bit easier to work with. So now that my picture is dry, I'm going to take it off the easel and I'm going to put it onto the back of the matting. Now I've taken the matting, it's actually black, and I've laid it face down. I'm going to do the same to the picture, it's going to be face down. I'm going to line it all up. So now that I've lined up my picture, and as I did it, I slowly put pieces of tape on there. I used acid-free masking tape. Now, this tape should be on there for years, so acid-free is great because it will not eat through the paper. So, I've got it all lined up. It's ready to go. I now flip over the matting, and you can see the picture is centered just where I want it. And uh, it looks pretty good. I think I'm ready to start putting the backing onto it now. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some spray adhesive or glue to the back of the matting, which will then adhere it to the backer board. Now, I like to use this 3M general purpose spray adhesive. Now, it works really quick. And again, take it outside when you spray it on there because it will make a mess. Just be careful. So what I've done is I flipped the matting back over and I've got my spray can of adhesive about six inches away and I'm carefully going to spray around the edges of the matting. I do not want to get it on the paper because it will cause light variations and possibly stains. I want to be very careful with that. And again, take it outside when you spray. Now once you've sprayed that matting with the adhesive, you got one shot to get this right. 
I like to put the edge of the backer board and the edge of the matting onto a flat surface like my table and slowly sandwich them together. Now once they're put together, I'm going to basically go around the matting and press down for about 30 seconds all the way around over and over again so that the adhesive holds. After you sandwich the two pieces together, you can see that they line up pretty good. And I want to make sure that they are lined up so they can fit inside a frame really easy. In this case, I'll just go down to a local craft store and buy a 16 by 20 frame and it'll pop right in there. This is basically the end result of all the hard work that you've done. Um, I like to go to the store and get a 16 by 20 frame that has a thick black border so that it separates the center picture from the wall that you're going to post it on. It lets the eye focus on the, on the artwork. Uh, as you can see, I've gotten rid of a lot of smears and stuff that f you first saw by hitting it with fixative and pastels over and over again. And the, the process, you just keep going until you're done. So now this picture is ready to mount in a 16 by 20 frame. The video that I'm going to show you next is by another artist, another craftsman, who does his framing in a slightly different way, a little more traditional way. Um, he, he includes more tools and a little more advice. So um, please enjoy. Hi, I'm Robert Markey. I'm an artist and we can talk about framing pastels. Now, in the process, there are a few aesthetic decisions you're going to make in terms of the color of the mat, the kind of frame, the size of your borders. But let's assume that we'll do that so it looks the way we want it. Um, the actual technical process is you take the size of your pastel and you need about a quarter to a half inch overlap on your mat. Okay, so when you hang the pastel on the mat, you can do so with a piece of, and it should be archival tape right across the top, just one side on here. Okay, and the other's going to hang loose. Okay, and for sure you check to see that's the way we want it to look. Okay. And you then take your frame, and on this one we're using a, a brass metal frame, and a piece of glass that you had cut to size to fit right in the frame. Okay. We put the frame together three sides. We put the glass in. And now we slide in the matted pastel. And we make sure that we do it right side up. They have a backer board, and there are some options for that. You can use another piece of mat board and little metal clips. I like the foam board. It's archival. It's a little better quality, and it just slips. Right in. And then the last piece of frame goes on. And tighten it down.
And there we have it, the framed pastel. I'm Robert Markey, and this has been about framing pastels.